Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to talk about another concept in the magnetic field and relate Teslas to Weber's. Those are two units used with magnetic fields. We know that Tesla is the unit for the magnetic field strength. But what about Weber's? Well, Weber's is equal to Tesla times square meters, which sounds like the units for magnetic flux because magnetic flux is defined as the strength of the magnetic field in Teslas times the area in square meters. So Weber's is actually the unit for magnetic flux, while Tesla's are actually the unit for the strength of the magnetic field. Now here we have an equation that allows us to find the strength of the magnetic field from a moving charge that has charge Q, which is moving with velocity V, and is a distance r squared away from the point of interest where we're trying to measure the strength of magnetic field. We also multiply it times mu sub naught divided by 4 pi and what the sine of theta because the angle relative to the magnetic field matters as well. Now mu sub naught is what we call the permeability of free space. It's the relationship of how magnetic field acts throughout space and is defined mu sub naught to be 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 Weber's per amp times meter. Here we have the term Weber again, which is defined as Tesla's times square meters, which were the units for magnetic flux. So there's a relationship between the magnetic flux and the current which causes the magnetic field. The current, of course, is the charge moving at velocity V. All right, how do we make sense out of all this? Let's take the B field here as defined by ca being caused by a moving charge, and let's see what units we get out of that equation. So mu sub naught is Weber's per m times meters. So here the units are going to be, for mu sub naught, Weber divided by m times meter. We multiply that times charge, which is Q, that is uh, coulombs, and velocity, which is meters per second, and distance squared, which is meters squared. Now we're going to simplify that to see what the units will be for the magnetic field. And of course, when we go up here, we realize that Teslas, which are the units for magnetic field, is indeed defined as kilograms per second per coulomb, and we should get the same result over here. So let's replace Weber by what Weber is equal to in terms of units, Tesla times meters squared. So this can be written as Tesla times meters squared divided by amps. Now amps, well let's leave it like that for now, amps times meters and meters. So this meters can cancel out that meters, so we get rid of that. We have coulombs in the numerator and we have seconds times meters squared in the denominator. Next I'm going to replace Tesla by newtons per amp times meters. So this can be written as, instead of Teslas, I'm going to write newtons per amp so now we have amp squared per meter, and we still have meter squared in the numerator, coulombs, we still have seconds, and meter squared. Actually, of course, I could have simplified this by dividing it there, but we'll take care of it here. So meter squared cancels out. Now, newtons can be written as kilograms meters per second squared. So this is equal to kilograms meters per second squared. We have amp squared. Now amp is coulombs per second. That means we need coulombs squared in the denominator and second square in the numerator. So I converted amp squared to coulomb squared per second squared. So coulomb squared per second squared goes to the numerator. I still have meters here. I still have a second here. And I have coulombs in the numerator. Now, we have meters that cancel out the meters, second square cancels out second square, one of the coulombs cancels out this one coulomb, and what do I have left? Kilograms in the numerator divided by, let's see here, seconds times coulomb in the denominator, which is exactly what I was expecting to get because those are the units for magnetic field. So again, that validates this equation that it does truly represent the magnetic field strength as a function of a moving charge with charge Q and velocity V. Next what I would like to do is start 
again come up here, look at the permeability of free space mu sub naught, and look at these units, Weber per amp times meter, and take that and reduce that to some basic standard units. Let's see what we end up with if we do that. So start with the basic units of Weber divided by amp times meters. Now remember that Weber was defined as Tesla times meter squared, and amps is defined by, well, let's see here. Let's leave it like this for now, amps times meters. So this meter squared and this meter cancels out. Now Tesla can be written as Newtons per amp times meter. That's why I didn't want to mess with amps yet. So Tesla is Newtons divided by amps, that becomes amps squared, times meters. And I still have a meter in the numerator. So Tesla becomes newtons per amp times meter, newtons per amp times meter. We have another amp, that's amp squared, and a meter at the top. Now this meter cancels out that meter. Now we can convert newtons and amps. Let's see what we get. Newtons is kilograms per meter times seconds. And amps is coulombs per second, so we end up with coulomb squared and divided by second squared, which goes to the numerator. Now we can simplify the seconds. We can get rid of this and get rid of that, which means that the units of mu sub naught, which is the permeability of free space, can be expressed in terms of kilograms, seconds divided by meters and coulomb squared. And this here is the same as Weber's per amp per meter. And again, to show you that everything can be reduced to the four basic units, we have meters, kilograms, seconds, and coulombs, or coulomb squared in this case, which are the units for the permeability of free space for a magnetic field. And that's how we know.